Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Aren't we all curious about what happens to us after death? As a Buddhist, I believe in the theory of reincarnation, which opens doors to the consciousness that every living being starts a new life after death. This cycle of death and rebirth is called samsara in Sanskrit, which means wandering or world to which life in the material existence is bound. Samsara can also mean flowing on or passing through, referring to reincarnation. The endless cycle of samsara is considered to be dukkha. That is a Sanskrit word also. Now what is dukkha? It is a Sanskrit word meaning suffering and pain pointing to fundamental suffering, desires, disappointments and the painfulness of day-to-day -day material life. Reincarnation has been a fascinating subject and I have been very interested in finding out more. The fact that we are reborn involuntarily under the power and sway of karmic force created by us, by our own thoughts and deeds, really urges me to find out more. Here is a story that captured my interest and it occurred in Sri Lanka several years ago. Professor Aaron Dear Harrelson at the University of Iceland in Reykjavik has done numerous studies on children who remembered their past lives. He has also done studies on children who claim to remember their past lives as Buddhist monks. In one such event, a then three-year-old boy, whose name was Tuminda, who was born in the mountainous rural area of Sri Lanka in 1984, in a town called Tundania, began to talk about the memories of leading the life of a monk in his past life. According to this little boy, he had been a senior monk at a temple called the Asgiriya Temple about 16 miles from his current hometown. He explained how he had, sudden, he had a sudden pain in his chest and fell and then died. He used the word apawath una, a Sinhalese word that is only described, used to describe the death of a monk. He claimed that he also owned a red car and that he taught a lot of apprentice monks. Three-year-old Tuminde also spoke about an elephant that he used to love and care for when he was a monk. When reading the report of his claims to being able to remember more and more about his past life, I also read about the fact that three-year-old Duminda had said that he had a bag of money and a radio in his temple that he wanted back. The researchers in their published documents state that his mother was embarrassed to report this because these are not items considered suitable for a monk to possess because monks are expected to live a very frugal life and not own material objects. He also had insisted that he used to preach a lot to other monks and lay people who came to his temple. Little Duminda had also shown no interest at all in playing with other kids. He was talking so much about becoming a monk. He could recite Buddhist verses in the ancient dialects of Sinhalese Buddhism. These stanzas or verses usually are only used and recited by monks. Even as a young kid, Duminda wanted to live like a monk, displaying calmness and unusual serenity for a three-year-old boy. He seemed to know exactly how monks placed flowers at the Buddhist statues in the Buddhist fashion and displayed extraordinarily detailed knowledge of monkish life, like how to wear the robe and how to recite Spirit. What is spirit? These are blessings done by monks. The stanzas are written in Pali, an ancient Indian language, and in Sanskrit. That is why young Duminda's knowledge of ancient languages and old Sri Lankan dialects is beyond extraordinary. 
Everything about Buddhism and Buddhist monks emanated through the life of this little boy. He had asked his mother not to touch him because women are not supposed to lay hands on a monk. Extensive research was carried out by Sri Lankan historians, Buddhist monks and Professor Harrison and they found the life story of a deceased monk who fitted the little kid's description. He was Venerable Mayanaka Gunnapana Thero, who was a leader of the monks in that district. A lot of monks who were interviewed told the researchers that the deceased monk did own a reddish brown car and that he had died of a heart attack. Also the monks remember that he had preached a lot and that is also something special because some monks do not preach, they indulge in meditation. The deceased venerable monk had also visited his chief disciple's village often to care for an elephant the disciple had in his garden. Now, how would a three-year-old kid who lives 16 kilometers away know all this? Even some of the monks had known about the deceased monk's connection to this elephant. Little Duminda constantly would request pictures of the Buddha instead of toys. He would draw pictures from the life of the Buddha. He wanted to dress like a monk. The monks said that the deceased monk didn't own a radio, but he was the only one of several possible monks Professor Harrington narrowed the search to, who had something resembling a radio, a gramophone. It is possible the kid did not know how to describe a gramophone as anything other than a radio. The venerable deceased monk, venerable Gunnapana, had been particularly fond of music. He was remembered as a virtuous monk who strictly observed the rules. All of these facts seem to corroborate to the boy's behavior and personality traits as well as his memories as Professor Harrelson observed the child. The monk the boy identified with is still remembered as a virtuous monk and an effective leader of monks. According to Buddhist beliefs, it was his attachments to things that his love for the elephant that made the venerable monk be born again. The karmic wheel keeps turning as long as there is attachment, love and a person is born again due to positive or negative attachments. Harrison thought it unlikely the boy learned any of this information from his family or others he would have come into contact with. For example, there could be a slight chance he may have learned the religious stanzas from the radio as they are broadcast very early in the morning daily as Sri Lanka is predominantly a Buddhist country. However, locals and teachers of Buddhist schools told Professor Harrison that no other children they know have learned the ancient stanzas and the, and the ancient tongue and it would be extremely unusual for a three-year-old to have learned them so well from a broadcast. Here is another reincarnation story of a Sri Lankan boy studied by Professor Harrison. Ruvan, born in August 1987, was two years old when he started talking about a previous life in a monastery, a monastery unknown to his parents. Later, they found, uh, they found out that the monastery was 20 miles away from their home. Two-year-old Ruan said that the temple kept a clay statue of a monkey. Now, this is not a common thing at all. Temples usually are not known to have monkey statues. Ruan knew how to sit in lotus posture, how to wear the robes, how to hold the monk's chanting fan. He refused to dinner as he said that when he was a monk he did not have an evening meal. It is common for monks to eat only breakfast and lunch 
He refused to sleep with his mother, telling her that monks do not sleep with women. Every evening, he performed a ceremony of blessings with ancient Sinhalese recitations. He expected everyone to be calm and controlled. He was not happy when his father brought alcohol into their home. Professor Harrison notes that the child was calm, never angry, but very serene. By the age of five, he led his classmates in religious ceremonies, acting like an abbot. The teachers who were interviewed told Professor Harrison that little Ruan would chant stanzas in the ancient language of Pali, very fluently. He did not play with other kids. He always drew pictures of the Buddha. When his parents later took him to the monastery that he claims to have lived in, he quickly went in and picked out the clay monkey, which was not even displayed prominently. Researchers would have been led to believe that Ruvan is the reincarnation of the previous abbot of the monastery, Venerable Gani Gam Panyasekara, who passed away in 1986 at the age of 84. And now, here is a reincarnation story from the US. Professor Jim B. Tucker, a child psychiatrist and a professor of psychiatry, and Neurobehavioral Sciences at the University of Virginia School of Medicine has written very enlightening books on reincarnation. Now I bring to you very briefly one of the cases Professor Tucker has investigated. Please note that the names have been changed to protect privacy. When I was your age, I changed your diaper, said the 18th month, John to his dad, who was stunned at what the baby has just, had just said. John talked about a sibling and he said that his sister turned into a fish. He said that some bad guys had turned her into a fish. Eerily enough, little John's grandpa had a sister who had been murdered and her body was found floating in San Francisco Bay. When asked how he died, John slapped the top of his head as if in pain. One year before John had been born, his grandpa had died of cerebral hemorrhage. I've also added links to websites which will give you um, more information on Professor Tucker's studies on reincarnation. That's it from me now. See you next time. Thank you.